Hi everybody, I thought I'd put out another video. I was going to do a quick follow-up video to the Eagle Pass, uh, Texas uh, point of entry for this upcoming total solar eclipse. But the Lord kind of led me in another direction. So the title of this one is Possible Rapture, Date and Time, and the Day of Judgment. But there are so many compelling videos out there that all point to something with this upcoming uh, April 8th uh, total solar eclipse. That, um, that's why I say possible, but I do think there is a lot of stuff that's about to transpire. Whether it be the rapture, and I won't say thus says the Lord, and the day of judgment, I think that it is thereabouts. But so anyways, let me go from here and show you what I was uh, led to do instead. So before I get into this presentation, let me say before I start that I will be looking at a little bit of Stellarium and the star positions in particular. As it says in Genesis 1:14, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs, firstly, and for seasons and for days and for years. So just like the Magi uh, knew the timing of Christ's birth, and Jesus actually reprimanded the Pharisees and Sadducees for not knowing the signs of his coming. He said that you can read the weather and know that the weather is going to be bad or good. But you couldn't read and tell the signs of his coming. So that's what I'm doing in this presentation is biblical astronomy and not astrology looking at the position of the stars and the sun in the Maseroth. So most of you have already seen the pathways that these three eclipses have taken, forming the olive across and tav across the United States. The first one being a total solar eclipse back in August 21st, 2017. Then this last one was the annular ring of fire solar eclipse and then now this upcoming one that enters through eagles pass goes through uh, the intersecting point of the two solar eclipses total solar eclipses rather that's coming up on august 8th so i thought this looks really familiar to me especially this triangular region in the heavens and sure enough i've been looking at this a while going like huh i think there's something to this so i wanted to investigate that further so right above the aries constellation is this triangular constellation called triangulum and it looked pretty similar to the pathways taken by the three uh, solar eclipses and I thought wonder what happens if I superimpose this constellation onto the map of the three solar eclipses uh, that uh, two that have occurred in the upcoming one but in order to do this I had to create a mirror image of the triangle constellation or triangulum and I've noticed in the past, I've done other videos with Leades with the seven churches, that the heavens are a mirror image of what we see in heaven or in Stellarium. If you want to represent it on an earth map, that you have to create a mirror image. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So as an example, the viewpoint from heaven, like I said, is a mirror image of what is shown on earth. 
So in, in order to superimpose a heavenly constellation on an earth map, on a map of the earth, you have to create a mirror image. So here's the constellation of the Pleiades, which is talked about in Revelation, which are the seven stars, which represents the seven churches. So if this is the way you view it in the sky, you create a mirror image of this image. And so when you look at a actual physical map of the location of the seven churches of Revelation, you notice that then you can then see that they look one in the same and can indeed superimpose and see that they do line up pretty well. Whereas if you use the exact image from the sky or from Stellarium, it would be backwards. So this is what I did with the constellation triangulum in order to line it up with the map of the three solar eclipses, their pathways. So now with the mirror image of triangulum, you can then superimpose this constellation over the eclipse paths of the three eclipses and you see that it lines up pretty well with that triangular region in the center of the three uh, the two total solar eclipses and the annular ring of fire solar eclipse and the triangulum or triangle constellation has three stars, which is Alpha Trianguli, Beta Trianguli, and Gamma Trianguli. You see that Coos Bay, Oregon is at this point for Alpha Trianguli. The e uh, Little Egypt, Illinois, or Carbondale, or Rapture, Illinois, is where Beta Trianguli star is and then for the third star in the triangle uh, constellation gamma trianguli lines up pretty well with eagle pass texas so in astronomy in order to determine the location of stars or a particular star galaxy in the heavens it goes by the right ascension and declination, just like we have longitude and latitude. So in the heavens, you have the right ascension and the declination. But I'm more focused on the declination. So for the triangulum constellation, the declination falls between 29.58 degrees and 35 degrees. And this is all within the same declination that the sun is or when it falls within the constellation of Aries. So on March 11th, the sun enters the constellation Pisces at 351.60 degrees, whereas on April 18th, the sun's declination enters the constellation of Aries starting at 29.12 degrees so that triangulum is just a little bit after the sun enters the constellation of aries and then on may 14th the sun enters the constellation of taurus at 53.50 degrees so this whole uh, declination of the triangulum constellation falls within the region in which the sun is in the constellation of Aries. So next I wanted to find out what the uh, three stars that form the triangulum constellation, what their declinations were. So for the Alpha Trianguli, uh, whose name is Moth Allah, it's at 29 degrees, 35 minutes, 38.2 seconds. And this is the equivalent uh, on the solar eclipse map of where Coos Bay, Oregon was. 
then for beta triangulae, which is called Mizan, it lies at 34 degrees 59 minutes and 13.8 seconds, or you can just basically say 35 degrees for the star's declination. And this is the one that lines up with the city of Little Egypt uh, in Illinois, closest to Carbondale or Rapture, Illinois. And then for Gamma Triangulae, which makes the third star of the triangular constellation, it's at 30 de 33 degrees. 50 minutes and 48.7 seconds declination. And this is the equivalent when you superimpose the map of where Eagle Pass, Texas is. So you might be asking, okay, so what does this all mean? So then you can look up in Stellarium till the sun gets to these three declinations. And the dates and times that these occur over Jerusalem. So for Alpha Trianguli, when the sun is also at the same declination, this occurs on April 19th when the sun is in Aries. And the specific time over Jerusalem is at 1522 p.m. UTC plus 3 time. For the beta one, when the sun is at 35 degrees declination, this occurs on April 25th in the constellation of Aries at the time of 4.04 a.m. UTC plus 3 in Jerusalem. And then finally, for gamma trianguli, for this declination, when the sun is at this declination, this occurs on April 24th, again, when the sun is in Aries at just after midnight, a minute after midnight, 12.01 a.m. UTC plus 3 time. So in Stellarium, you can see the constellation of Aries and also the constellation of Triangulum. And so I have the pointer now on Alpha Trianguli, and so you can see that the right ascension or RA and declination DEC. So the latter part is what I'm interested, which is the declination. That star is at 29 degrees 34 minutes 38.2 seconds, as it shows on the chart. And then for Mizan, which lines up with Little Egypt, Illinois, its declination is pretty much at 35 degrees. And then likewise for Gamma Trianguli star, its declination is at 33 degrees, 50 minutes, 48.7 seconds. And that's what, I, and that's the equivalent of their location of the stars in the heavens. Like I said, it's likened to a map with the GPS location of its longitude and latitude. So the declination for beta triangulum is the one that superimposed over little Egypt on the Earth's map was essentially at 35 degrees declination but for the sun you have to look at the ecliptic longitude for 35 degrees as well so here's the sun on the ecliptic line at 35 degrees and this occurs on april 25th 2024 at 404 a.m over jerusalem so with the superimposed map over the constellation triangulum or the triangle constellation, I think that this is alluding to possible rapture dates, in particular, the one over Little Egypt, which occurs on April 25th when the sun is in Aries 
at 4.04 a.m. Israel time, which is UTC plus 3. But although this chart shows three possibilities, and again, this is the star's declination must match the sun's ecliptic location in order to get the date and the time. I think the primary focus, since so many signs are pointing to where X marks the spot over Little Egypt, that this is the primary date to be looking at. And that is on April 25th, at 4.04 a.m. Jerusalem time or UTC plus 3. So as many people believe that this is also the sign of Jonah, which is a 40-day warning, as do I, I took the April 25th, 2024 date that the sun seems to be pointing to. I subtracted 40 days and you end up with March 16, 2024, and this is the date of the Equilux that Repo Man 64 speaks up uh, all the time. So I think this might be from the Equilux on the Enoch calendar, March 16th, the day of equal parts, plus 40 days, gives you the April 25th, 2024 date and that's when the sun is in the same position when you superimpose the map so the declination of the star beta triangulae which is superimposed over the city of little egypt or carbondale or rapture illinois that occurred on april 25th 2024 at 4.04 a.m. Jerusalem time. But when you include the end date in your calculation, it ends up being from March 17th, the next day, to April 25th, which is a total of 40 days. And that so happened is Nissan 1 on the Enoch calendar that Mike uh, Repo Man 64 shows, and then April 25th is Ayer 10, which is 40 days later after Nissan 1. But as the days of Noah were, Ayer 10 would then go back six months, making it Heshvan 10, and that would be on a Noadic calendar, and Heshvan 10 is seven days before Noah entered the ark. It was the date that Methuselah died, seven days before the flood, and Methuselah means his death shall bring. So April 24, 2024 at 4.04 a.m. UTC Jerusalem time could be a possible rapture date and time and or the date of judgment. So that IR 10, again being Heshvan 10 for the days of Noah, six months earlier. And again, that's seven days before the date of the flood that was on Heshvan 17. So I think that is of great importance. Since Heshvan 10 which is as the days of Noah were, is seven days before the onset of the flood or April 25th, 2025 on the Enoch calendar if you have Nissan 1 as 17 March. And that's also seven days before the flood when Methuselah dies. And again, Methuselah means his death shall bring, and many people fill in the blank as the flood or destruction, then that means destruction or judgment would then begin on the flood date, Ayer 
17, which is the same as Heshvan 17 on the Noahic calendar as the days of Noah were, then Ayer 17, or equivalent to Heshvan 17, falls on May 2nd of 2024. So when you superimpose the solar eclipse, three solar eclipse map over triangulum, the constellation in the sky, which has a pretty good match, you end up with the April 25th date as being Heshvan 10 on the Noadic calendar, and then seven days later, May 2nd of 2024. So these could be possible with the, the 404 time. That could be the possible rapture date and time, as well as the date of judgment or the flood, the proverbial flood. So I'm just looking at these as possibilities of looking at both dates April 25th and or May 2nd of this year as both possible the rapture date and time and the day of judgment. So please bear these in mind. Again, it's not thus says the Lord. There's a lot of convergence going on as you see in the YouTube community with the days of Noah, the days of Lot, the sign of Jonah. So we all know that we're in the season and I'm just presenting yet another possibility as to what I'm seeing. So anyways, I hope this video has been a blessing to you. I wanted to get it out because there's a lot of dates that are approaching fast. So this could just be a uh, another possibility if those days come and go then these fall towards the end of April and early May so we shall soon see but please bear these dates in mind as high watch dates anyways again I hope this has been a blessing and hopefully I'll see you soon in the sky and I will talk to you soon. Take care.